Hello science lover this is Sai podcast a podcast where we explain science puzzle in a way everybody understands I'm your host Dr Bishit Puddar a scientist with more than 12 years research experience in cancer disease Here today we joined by Cecilia who a real fermentation enthusiast and the creative mind behind an innovative food and drink startup which which called Ceci Not only does she, she have a deep Chinese heritage in fermentation, but she is also a Lake Cordon Bleu graduate in nutrition and gastronomy and work at Silo London, the fast zero waste restaurant with a big focus on fermentation. Cecilia blends ancient fermentation with modern science to create foods that are tasty, healthy and good for people and the planet. She is here to share her passion and show us how fermentation can be a game changer in our kitchens for our bodies, minds and beyond that. Hi Cecilia, how are you? Hi Vish, I'm really good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for joining us uh today. Uh it is my pleasure to have you. So, can you tell about yourself uh, uh for our audience please? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Cecilia. I'm the founder of Ceci. Uh and for me, I've always been a foodie. I've loved cooking and gastronomy. And uh I grew up in China. I came to the UK uh when I was uh 20. Um but I have worked in the mm-hmm. uh, private banking and wealth management industry for over 12 years. Uh mm-hmm. before I kind of pivoted into uh gastronomy, nutrition uh, and food. Um yeah so that's about me. Okay nice. Uh as we are discussing about it that like um uh, you just started recently like um uh, Ceci. Um yeah. uh so about can you tell about uh Ceci a bit uh um about your company and all those thing? Yeah absolutely. Well so Ceci actually spawn mm-hmm. uh through my journey of rediscovering myself and also uh discovering the whole new world of nutrition mm. and fermentation. Yeah. So uh basically during so as I said I I've worked in the private banking industry for 12 years mm-hmm. but I always felt there's something missing. Um uh and I think and I was I've been a food blogger for a very long time but I never really oh. took the leap of faith that, okay let me dive into like food industry and stuff. But right. during the pandemic I had a really challenging um physical and mental health mm. and then at a point where i felt well actually what's the meaning of life so i i i took a pro- career break and decided yeah. to go to my dream school la mm. cordon bleu uh, to yeah. study nutrition uh, gastronomy and science and then that's where i actually realized actually how important mm. the um you know the food and diet to our health and right. uh, how important fermentation is in terms of preserving food you know changing the texture and then since then i was like oh let me understand a bit more and that really kind of like you know took the spark out of me again right. and yeah. and then i felt a lot more positive i started to change my diet and then um yeah and then uh i guess i just i went to a bilbao like a food tech like well like a summit mm. and that everybody is talking about fermentation but they were talking about precision fermentation how they use that to create like a lab grown meat and stuff i was like mm. no i don't want to eat lab grown meat <laughs> <laughs> but i i'm interested in like fermentation because right. i've got massive background in fermentation because my family used to just like made like like rice mamazaki like a pao thai you know like tons of it right mm-hmm. so yeah. i i really delve into like a microbiology side of fermentation the science behind it, my fermentation wow and then understanding how that sort of like can improve our diet and health yeah. um so so basically just kind of sum up like sesi is really like a uh, you know a journey of me finding my own purpose but also yeah. my passion of making a a better healthier more natural food mm-hmm. for human to and also for the planet as well right yeah wow it's a really really interesting journey actually and is <laughs> i would say no i would say it's it's a very thoughtful journey and and your passions is turning into 
uh, like profession or business is, is also good because it would be sustainable in the future whenever your passion turns into uh, profession. So yeah, it was really nice to know all the, uh, you know, the, the details of, of, of starting as an entrepreneur. So it's really good. So my <laughs> next you. question, uh, thank yeah. you. So my next question is, uh, as we are talking about the formulation, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, so probably everyone asking, what is fermentation and what is the science behind of fermentation? Yeah, absolutely. So fermentation is basically, I see it as the uh, oldest human microbiological mm. tool yeah. that exists in the human history for centuries. And you know about wine, you know about beer, you know, and that's a type of fermentation and also right. sauerkraut. So I guess from a science perspective, like fermentation, mm -hmm. you can see it as a metabolic process where right. like microorganisms break down a larger substance such as like, you know, carbohydrates and like sugar, you know, like, and then into a simple substance in the absence of oxygen. Right. So these microorganisms can include like bacteria, yeast, and fungi because they need energy and fill to, to live. So yep. during the fermentation process, mm -hmm. like they break down sugar and starches to, you know, different assets and then which then is used to make ATP with oxygen. ATP yep. is like organic chemical. It's like a battery that powers cells exactly. to do their words, moving muscles and thinking, thinking thoughts. And but when there's no oxygen, they also produce other byproduct and uh, but also less ATP as well. So basically, I think you know, like different microorganisms have a different favorable food sources, mm. um, and that's why there are a lot of different type of fermentation based on the type of bacteria and yeast and, you know, fungi that you use. Um, yeah, so that's, I guess, I hope that clarify uh, the fermentation and the science behind it a bit. Yeah, uh, you're talking about like, um, I remember, so whenever like, at the time we're talking about that, uh, you have experience whenever you uh, ferment something and then the sugar decrease. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So uh, for me, I, I really kind of been like dive into like a lacto fermentation, a lactic mm -hmm. asset fermentation. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as a part of like, uh, I guess, product development, I've been experimenting using lots of different vegetables and fruits mm. and to test whether, you know, the pH reduction, the pH changes and the sugar changes. And also reading some science papers as well to make sure that I've kind of like, done the process right so yeah. it's really interesting that if you use like if you ferment beet beetroot for example yeah. at a room temperature but obviously the room temperature it de de like varies it's normally mm -hmm. about 20 degrees to like 30 degrees that can be seen as room temperature but about four or five days you will see a, like a 15 to 25 percent reduction wow in, like, it's a lot sugar yes yeah. yeah, absolutely that's why because beetroot or like yeah. Um, technically speaking, it's actually high in sugar, but mm -hmm. uh, with fermentation, through the fermentation, actually, it reduces the, you know, simple sugar in beetroot, which actually makes it a bit healthier, you know, for people to eat. But again, beetroot itself is a great vegetable, as I highly recommend, them, you know, uh, if, if, if you can, if your health condition can eat it. Right. Wow. It's very interesting. Um, uh facts and numbers, I would say, about uh, how fermentation could help um, to reduce sugar because mm. it would be really good, like, let's say, um, uh, people want to reduce the sugar levels in your diet. Uh, so the fermented food, like people are eating bitters normally, but it's a fermented, so they are taking the same amount of bitters, probably to reduce, as a, as a, according to your experiment, so like less to 15 to 20% um, sugar reduction which is really a lot actually, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also not just beetroot, there are also mm -hmm. quite a few other like science studies as well, looking to like lacto fermented vegetables yeah. and uh, and how that changes, you know, the, the you know, the molecules, the sugar molecules. Uh, okay, wow. You mentioned about like bacteria, right? So now mm -hmm. my next question mm -hmm. is, what is, what are the relationship between human and bacteria? Um, especially yeah. in terms of uh, our gut health. Uh, can yeah. you go in that direction, please? Yeah, absolutely. Well, so if you think of like human gastrointestinal, like we call it GI tract, mm -hmm. right, as a 
bustling city. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, and got, a lot of things happening. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there were so many things are happening. And it's a home to like more than 100 trillion microorganisms, right? Think about yeah. that sort of like uh, big number. Volumes. Yeah, big number. And then they all yeah. like these living things, like what I talk about, like bacteria, fungi, viruses, everything like that, like live inside that. Yeah. And they are very diverse and active and forming our gut bio microbiota. Mm -hmm. And uh, so research basically shows that over a thousand different bacteria species exist in our gut, but 30 to 40 species make up over 95% of the population. And mm. depending on the, the location, <laughs> and then uh, and you find different type of bacteria in these as well. So right. when we were born, we actually inherit our initial set of gut microbiome from our mother through okay. different birth environment and also their pregnancy diet mm -hmm. but then it's not like static it changes like as we grow up because yeah. obviously micro bacteria is kind of assist in our natural environment we can't see it but they're everywhere and mm -hmm. then your gut microbiome basic change based yeah. on our diet lifestyle yeah. medication environment and many other factors so mm -hmm. like recently you know a lot of uh, actually doctors start to prescribe like probiotic to their patients after they take have to take you know like antibiotics because basically mm -hmm. antibiotic they you know when you feel sick you might be caused by one bad viruses right. you take antibiotics but then that antibiotics also destroy your good bacteria as well. And yeah. that's why doctors will start to prescribe probiotic, you know, to supplements. To balance it. Yeah, to balance it, to bring back the good bacteria, diversity, right. yeah. and and also the species as well, and volumes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, that you already mentioned about the antibiotics effect. So, so you know that I'm from from my country, like from Bangladesh, and then I found that many people, uh, even without doctor prescriptions, they can mm. they, they just take antibiotics. And then recently, there's a one study came out, um, yeah. a, um, a study from Bangladesh. They found that like most of the young people, the, the antibiotic doesn't work on them uh, because mm. of uh, probably they are. Um, uh, developing antibiotic resistance. Uh, yes. Because because without uh, a prescription, they're taking antibiotics too much. Mm. Probably they are like, uh, so it's really dangerous. Like whenever people are taking antibiotics uh, without doctor prescription or they are Absolutely. not taking in a right way, right? So yes. yeah, it's, yes. it's good that yes. you mentioned. Actually, I'm planning yes. to uh, I'm planning to uh, make another episode on antibiotic resistance. So probably like oh, that's I'm, so interesting. I would definitely dive into and listen. <laughs> yeah, so I I, yeah. I I already I already prepared. Just I have to record on it, so uh, it will Great. come soon. So okay. another time, I you are mentioning about like, this relationship gut health and brain. Mm. So can you mm. discuss about that that the direction? So it was very interesting when I was uh, talking to you at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so um, there are lots of research currently focusing on like obviously the gut health and how yeah. gut health influence the overall health, like what you talked about, the immunity uh, modulations and, you know, metabolism, uh, men uh, speeding up like metabolic process, etc. But there's mm. another massive trend or well, area of research focusing on like a gut brain exit. Yeah. So th the way how it like, if think about it, you know, your gut and brain is kind of like bi-directional communication mm. and your gut sends signals and, yeah. uh, and talk to your brain. And yeah. then your brain talks back, you know, wow. and um, the way how they talk to each other. So basically through various pathways, such as nervous system, hormone yeah. and immune systems. So, so, for example, you know, we all know like serotonin, right? We, we love oh, serotonin yeah. because it's a, it's a good, <laughs> it's a good brain chemicals, right? It makes people bring us, us happy. Car. Yeah. And happy. Uh, and then, but, you know, like low levels of serotonin could could obviously definitely make us feel depressed and anxious yeah. yeah and then you can't sleep and stuff but no one actually really realized that because i only found out like quite recently is that 95 percent mm. of body to serotonin is what? actually produced yeah yeah in the intestine yeah wow. i was like whoa how that happened <laughs> right i thought it was a brain chemical but then when i look into the process basically assess that the process begins with like tryptophan like an essential amino acids that we mm -hmm. get from our diet 
So yeah. our gut microbiome could either release these chemicals that signal gut cells to yeah. convert these tryptophan to serotonin or could yeah. produce the tryptophan themselves. And then that's why everybody was saying now, like really focusing on well, actually mm -hmm. gut health and mental yeah. health sometimes actually has some sort of relationship, but this research is still being developed. There are lots of things still need to be done. And also, uh, and also there are some uh, research actually started to feed um, some mild depressed, uh, you know, patients with like yeah. probiotic to see mm -hmm. whether it changed their symptoms and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But, but regardless, I think it's just, um, there are quite a lot of research shows the evidence around that. So mm -hmm. eat your probiotic food, high fiber food to keep your gut <laughs> happy, and you're more likely to be happier. <laughs> so, Definitely. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so uh, I hope that helps. That explains. So, so basically what I have to do, if I want to be happy, I have to make sure that my guts are happy, and then I have yeah. to take the right foods to make guts and love and good, from making yeah. more serotonin, right? Yeah. If I understand yeah. it correctly. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll keep it in mind. Uh, I'll put more good food, uh, more healthier food for my guys. And probably I'll be more happy. Uh, <laughs> it's a really interesting fact about it, to be honest. Yeah. So, um, so that you mentioned about that like, fermented food um, can mm. uh, improve our gut microbiome. Can you give mm. me some as scientific evidence uh, on health benefits of fermented food? Uh, you mean from the fermented food? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, so um, the way how fermented food can increase our gut microbiome actually mm -hmm. is through because fermented food, certain fermented food, food for example, like lactic acid fermentation, fermented vegetables, right? The lactobacillus is actually a type of species of bacteria that can be found. That's why when you eat certain fermented food or have fermented drink or fermented like yogurt, right? And kefir, mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. lactobacillus, good bacteria go into our gut and, you know, we improve our you know gut microbiome diversity of them volumes yeah. and that's one side of it but again um well fermented like fermented food not only increase our gut microbiome from that perspective but also fermentation really increase food nutrient bioavailability wow. and significantly compare with raw food mm. um so you know, actually, when we eat food, go into, we call it our tummy or whatever, you know, yeah, the bacteria is actually ferment and then break down these food in our, in our gut. Like, you know, they make these uh, nutrients more available for us. But mm. when you eat fermented food, actually fermented food, like the bacteria in the fermented food already done those process for you, you know, yeah. and then, um, so for example, I don't know whether you know that, uh, well, mm. you, I'm sure you know, cause you're a scientist. <laughs> so there are a lot of natural compounds in plant food could always yes. act as anti-nutrient. Yeah. Um, and then they actually reduce absorption in our bodies. And for example, mm. by tasting whole uh, grains and beans and tanning the teas, could really hinder and stop the you know our body to absorb the plant iron, yeah. And also like green uh, leafy green vegetables like you know like spinach, they've also got oxalate that could also hinder calcium uh, like absorption. Mm -hmm. And so fermentation has been shown to reduce anti nutrient compound and increase right. nutrient bioavailability. So mm -hmm. there's a study basically found that iron absorption increased by. 100% in 17 mm. participants yeah. who consume uh, fermented vegetables mm -hmm. compared to those who ate fresh one, like a through blood test. But obviously, this is a quite small samples and don't know whether it can apply to, you know, a bigger, like, you know, clinical research samples. But it, at least it, it shows some sort of like, um, I guess, you know, like evidence that it potentially could provide that sort of benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, and also, obviously, I, I talked about the, the micronutrients as well, yeah. right? Yeah. And these microorganisms, they, they also can synthesize vitamins yeah. and mineral and produce really beneficial compound. For example, like a, a microorganism, you probably have heard of it, is widely used as a starter culture in yoga. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. called a streptococcus. It's actually well quite known to synthesize folate and vitamin B12, mm -hmm. you know, which is really essential for brain health, energy production. And yeah. also one of the biggest byproducts of fermentation or fermented food 
is mm-hmm. organic assets like lactic asset, acetic asset, you know, right. and these not only, well, they, where you eat kimchi and sauerkraut, it's got that tangy, like sour taste, but yeah. Not just not not just like it it does more than that because a lot of research shows like these la- like organic acts are actually as a bit like antimicrobial properties and yeah. help us to remove immune in, like uh, immunity so and um, and that's why I mean now you see lots of research and people actually start feeding maybe some patients with IBS a small amount of uh, you know fermented food to see whether it can improve or modulate you know potentially change and you know the, the gut microbiome and also right. the host health but again as I said this is still quite new obviously a mm-hmm. um, lot of research is still kind of being developed um, so watch the space <laughs> yeah So all fermented food are the same for our body. So we can take any kind of fermented food. Is there any any kind of limitations or uh, what do you think? So should we like whenever taking a fermented food? So how can we choose which one is good? Is there any risk factors? Can you go in that direction? Just tell about whatever you know. Yeah, absolutely. So basically fermented food from... uh... Actually, like if you look at FDA, or actually consider fermented food or generally consider safe. Obviously, mm. if you consume at a specific amount, like don't over consume it. So right. a lot of times based on assumptions. Yeah. But again, because fermentation process is like a microbiological process, isn't it? It plays with bacteria and yeast. So yeah. if, you're, if the fermentation is not being done correctly, okay, and it's really easy to have to have a bad bacteria which but could what, potentially cause massive issues so whenever and, you mention, yeah. i'm sorry um uh, when you mention about that correctly um so mm. what do you mean the correctly to process fermented food can you go in that direction too yeah yeah absolutely so in fermentation um well you have to apply lots of control method in mm. it yeah. and the way how you can control and make sure uh, that you produce fermented food safe is yeah. through either ph so temperature, mm-hmm. obviously higher temperature tend to lead higher risk of brewing back bacteria. Yeah. And also higher pH, for example, you know, like botulism can mm. thrive. Can be, you know, yeah. With, yeah. If you have a pH like lower 4.5, potentially it could be safe or even, you know, but above that it could be dangerous and also like a moisture level as well and mm. the oxygen as well. So yeah. all of these are control factors. Yeah. So depending on, again, because obviously we've got different type of fermentation process. Definitely. So you would apply mm. different type of control. That means yeah. different temperature because different depending on the strengths of bacteria and yeast, they yeah. thrive in different type of temperature. Yeah. So that's why how you make sure it's safe. And also sanitization is very important as well. Mm. So it's interesting because I was talking to my friend and they were like, oh, is fermented sweet corn, uh, you know, or coconut safe? Uh, because I read a, a case in, in Asia, like, a, you know, 20 people die from eating fermented coconut, fermented co- sweet corn. Yeah. And I'm like, well, actually, you know, um, I personally, obviously, it's my personal opinion. I don't know the ins and outs of it. I think um, because, like, because I'm just thinking from my personal perspective. So, in, in, let's say in Asia, right, a lot of um, fermentation at home or commercial, they might not meet the standard that required. Mm-hmm. Hence that you might have a contamination around the process, which yeah. caused the certain death or cause illness. So mm. that's why I'm saying that if you decide to ferment food at home and yeah. just make sure, you know, <laughs> make sure you apply the right salt amount for yeah. the lactic fermentation vegetables mm. and also the right temperature. You know, if you have any mold, don't eat it, you know, just throw them away, you know, yeah. if you find or kimchi. So, so yeah, so that's hopefully that helps. But again, I mean, like you asked about whether all fermented food are created natural or not, right? Well, yeah. actually, personally, because I've read quite a lot of research as well around like how fermented uh, high protein food can potentially cause some like harmful bacteria, okay. uh, like chemical compounds to health. 
Mm -hmm. um like for example like heavy salted fish and salamis often contain contains preservatives yes like nitro which can convert to nitro salmons which mm. is a chemical compound that could lead to increased risk of various cancer right and then who actually has classified like processed meat mm. you know, as group one human cancer causing agent so i would wow. say you know like yeah so i would say you know like it's not like don't eat it right we all love eating our traditional food and it's it's bad when you take that joy away but i guess just making sure real labels you know control your portions and also for mm. example we all love kombucha but yeah. probably no one really read that knows that well maybe yeah. a lot not a lot of people knows that actually the u.s center for disease control and prevention suggests we should limit our kombucha to less than 340 mils per day Wow. Uh, and then, uh, so if you consume 100 mils of kombucha, it doesn't cause health risk. But yeah. excess consumption could lead to like, acidosis, which is a condition where the body fluids contain too much acid. And then you might experience fatigue, weakness, another problem. Mm -hmm. And also another way, which I know because I'm from China, right? We, we love yeah. heavily salted our vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> And then, um, yeah, we love salt, you know, like, and um, so some like, like pao thai, you know, and also I know some kimchi as well, has yeah. in, like enormous amount of salt um, yeah. to get that flavor. But then again, you know, like, because in order to make kimchi and, you know, like pao thai safe, normally uh, you have to have a 2% salt as indication. But, but again, um, you know, obviously we all know taking, if you consume too much salt, it can mm. cause hypertension and also if you have some health conditions high yeah. salt diet is not good for you so just make sure watch your portions you know consume it wisely and also use it as a part of very healthy balanced diet you know don't right. just chalk your jaw of kimchi like, every day <laughs> <laughs> or, or drink your liters of kombucha every day you know like um uh, yeah and then and then you might feel uh probably not well after that i wouldn't feel well so <laughs> yeah hopefully that helps <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely so you mentioned uh, like well, if i like understand correctly that you're telling about that it's very important how we produce uh farmed food so we have yeah. to be very careful like how they produce like environment like as you mentioned temperature pas <laughs> And also sterilization process is very important. Otherwise, it will be contaminated and the bad bacteria can grow in the system, right? Yeah. And on the other hand, in terms of um, you know, what kind of fermented food we are having, so meaning that like we have to be careful that our fermented food is not having too much salt. As you mentioned, that salt could be a culprit to induce other kind of disease like a cardiovascular disease, right? So we have to be very yeah, careful. But so it Absolutely, but salt is important. <laughs> yeah, because because uh, salt is actually plays a crucial uh, role in uh, especially lacto fermentation, like you know mm. sauerkraut, and yeah. just to keep it safe because lactobacilli thrive in salty brine, but other bacteria die. So salt yeah. actually makes it safe. But then again, yeah. I guess from my perspective, I was just trying to say that you know you can you know you don't have to put too much salt like to okay. it doesn't unless you know or if you really like salty kimchi or salty you know pao thai or you know these fermented mm. vegetables just just try to reduce your portion and just don't eat a jar of it like every yeah. day so meaning <laughs> that we have we have to take fermented food mindfully yeah mindfully absolutely test it with the small volumes every yeah. day and see how yeah. you feel and especially if your body is not used to fermented food you mm. might feel a bit funky you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you might have a gas you know like you're like oh what's going on here so just just take a small amount and yeah. then and also uh yeah every day and then see how mm. you feel right yeah so yeah. it's all about Food is all about making you feel good and happy, you know, and live a Definitely, positive, yeah. uh, <laughs> an adjective life. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So um, you mentioned a lot of food uh, during our discussions. So I want mm -hmm. to just know, like, say, uh, I just telling, can you tell me like uh, five foods, uh, fermented food, which, which would be good for our health? Can you make a list of five foods for our audience, please? Yeah, well, I personally, <laughs> I'm just talking about my personal opinion because I think different culture might have a different favorite fermented food. I think, you know, from a science perspective, like, yeah. you know, um, 
as long as these, you know, f- like fermented foods co- like contains good bacteria, then actually good for your host health. Mm. So for me, I would say I, pr- I prefer yogurt, uh, kefir, because I really I eat a lot of sauerkraut and kimchi myself and pao yeah. thai. You know, like I I ferment my own like uh, vegetables based on my family recipes and stuff. And mm-hmm. also personally, I, I I recently I've started to kind of look into more kind of like. Um, like a, a like solid state fermentation product, like a tempeh, you know, miso, and these kind of like products. Um, and also, it's interesting because I think recently I was speaking with a tempeh brand founder, and then mm. they were saying so. Basically, tempeh is like fermented soya bean, whole soya yeah. bean. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, they uh, he was saying that research shows fermented tempeh has mm. actually increased fifty percent in protein compared wow, 50. to like a, 50 yeah one wow. five zero percent yeah compare with like you know like a tofu you know like raw kind of like soy like soybean like mm-hmm. and you know so so yeah so i think it's it's really interesting it's i think at the end of the day as i said it's really about what you love yeah <laughs> and uh and then consume white like wisely yeah wow uh, that's a very interesting fact actually that um it increased like like fermented soy increased like 50 percent protein wow was great. So, uh, can you touch a bit about what is the contribution in uh, sustainability aspect of fermentation? Yeah, absolutely. Well, to be honest, I love um, one of the reasons why I love fermentation is because mm. it is a human's natural method to preserve food. Yeah. Because in the old days, imagine we 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 actually don't have fridge we didn't have fridge at that time so we mm. use fermentation to preserve we eat we ate seasonally and mm. we use fermentation and also other like you know preserving methods to preserve food mm. so nowadays i think a lot if you look at the food and hospitality industry a lot of people started to go back to the ancient you know how our ancestors like preserve the food and not yeah. to have any waste because i hate i really hate food waste and uh, yeah. when I w- yeah, yeah, and when I worked uh, like a silo for like an internship, like yeah. I was like kind of basically mind blown, like you know, with how how they use fermentation to change the food systems, right, to make it zero waste. So they mm. had a one ton of fermentation program. So yeah. they often use a primary cut of animals and plants to make dishes, but yeah. ferment sub primary cuts or waste part with koji or, you know, some other, um, you know, starter to create like a dressing sauce and other product. Now, for example, I know they recently created a new product called like a pumpkin gut esso sauce. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. What and is then that? they use yeah, so basically, you know, when you eat a pumpkin, you eat the meat, and then you you chucked away, you know, the uh, the guts inside, and also ah, chucked away the like skin as well. So they yeah. basically use the well, they use the guts, the pumpkin guts, to make like exo sauce. Yeah. Uh, apply cold fermentation in it, and then with the skin, then they actually use all of the skin to make another sauce as well. And I remember when I had my birthday, uh, like dinner there, and they told me I was having a chicken bones and wings that have been fermented for 12 months wow <laughs> i was like whoa is this safe uh, but when i taste it i was like oh my god it's absolutely delicious i could even die with it that's but fine anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you know but anyway so that's basically it's 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 fantastic way of you know preserving food so i guess at a home like yeah. for the for your listeners i guess you know if you buy too much so like a white cabbages you can't mm. finish or beets you can't finish just be creative about it just start firming you know your vegetables exactly. right and yeah and then and then i and they're also um so you would definitely reduce a lot of waste at home for the rest well. yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah. very important things yeah mm-hmm. it is very nice that uh, you also touch uh, on on that uh, a bit so it's very nice the people will be aware that like how they can reduce the food waste especially in households so i was um uh, reading an article maybe a few months back i found that like uh, um one third of food production in the walls like the, um uh, is a food waste basically so which is yeah. really re- which is really really sad that you can see that um other part of the world probably they're, they're uh, uh, struggling for food and then we are making a lot of waste uh, uh food waste so which is not good actually and it's, yeah, it's also absolutely. 
And it's also also not good for environment, actually. If you produce more force, meaning that you are making more um, uh, carbon emissions, and which is not ultimately good for our uh, earth. So we have to be yeah. uh, very careful, very mindful when we are uh, buying food or uh, how we can, as you mentioned, how we can uh, reuse or how can we like um, uh, avoid the food waste, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why, I mean, in my, uh, that's why like sustainable, create sustainable food is very important to me. Yeah. And there's a, one of what I make as well, actually, you know, imagine when we, eat juices we just throw away the pulp and stuff actually the pulp is full of goodness right it's all the mm-hmm. fibers that actually your body needs so uh in my experiment i've been using pulp to experiment and how to make it tastier so that basically when you eat like let's say a uh, fruit and vegetables you yeah. can drink the juices if you like it but then again you can also eat the pulp as well to reduce the food waste because like i know currently uh like food manufacturers food juice manufacturers they basically like use the food prot as like yeah. a biofuel, which is still good, right? Yeah. But again, yeah. you know, if these are good enough, why aren't we? Why aren't we start to eat them? Yeah, yeah and also exactly. I know it's interesting. There, there is a kimchi brand as well, as uh, uh, founded by um, a Korean girl, and then she she basically uh, take all of the uh, like cauliflower leaves from mm-hmm. the hospitality like restaurants, and okay. then create like a cauliflower like a kimchi leaf kimchi Whoa. which is delicious as well so i think wow. we need more people uh we need more people uh, who really want to fight against food waste and i call myself food waste warrior mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. uh yeah. And then, nice so we, yeah yeah so definitely you can try to use fermentation to reduce food waste at home yeah oh, definitely it's, it's a very good message and an important <laughs> message to our audience actually yeah Mm. Good. Uh, it was very nice uh, to talk. Uh, before we wrap up, is there anything you would like to share uh, to our audience? Uh, well, I I think today we talked a lot, isn't it? <laughs> 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 I think I guess I think one thing that I've learned the best is well, just to create to live a healthy life. It's not like you should eat this, you shouldn't eat that. It's more about actually just make sure you eat a healthy and very unbalanced diet. So basically, mm-hmm. UK government has that UK Eat Well guide, and then it tells you, you know, what are the good food that you should eat. And then, so I guess just to make yourself feel better and then live a healthier, more energetic life, make sure you have a lot of plants you know, 30 plants a week that would really help help you lift up your energy mm-hmm. and also trying to incorporate some fermented food in your diet bit by bit to mm-hmm. increase your gut microbiome, eat high fiber food. So yeah, so hopefully today what I share has been helpful. But if your listeners, uh, if the listeners who are interested in finding out about more journey, about my journey and also my recipes as yeah. well, and, um, and then, you know, uh, they can follow me on uh, instagram and, and linkedin okay nice yeah um thank you cecilia uh, for this insightful conversations and i learned a lot of things from you um especially number and facts and mm. um and i wish all the best for you and for your startup it's called ceci thank you uh, uh, you're welcome uh, to our listeners thank you for joining on cyport chat we talk science and let's know science together Until next time, stay curious, stay inspired, and stay tuned for more exciting conversation right here on your favorite Cypher Chat. Thank you. Bye-bye.